Travis McHenry from Kickstarter brings us a Bosch Terra. I say a Bosch Terra because there was one released by LS back in 2000. So this is Travis McHenry's version of it. And uh, I gotta say, Travis knows how to run a Travis knows how to run a Kickstarter. That's for sure. Travis uh, did not skimp on the extras. These were all free extras that I got with the Kickstarter. Let's go through the deck first. I think 90% of the people are interested in the deck uh, primarily. So let's go through that first and then check out the remainder of the extras. All right, the good old opening of the plastic. Got a box and a bag. Normally you're gonna pay for the box or the bag, but uh, this time you get both. So this is the Bosch Taro. We have a deluxe box, very nice, very nice. Nice hardbound box. And uh, within it, we get the Taro. Let's zoom in a little bit and get some uh, shaky camera action. Pardon the shaky cam, as we want to get as close as we possibly can to the tarot to make sure that we see as much detail as possible. So here is the back of the box and the front of the box, somebody will ask. And as well as here is the back of the cards. Let's take off the little wrapper here and see what we got. There's the back of the cards. Very sort of interesting, interesting back there. It reminds me of some, um, some playing cards. So there we go. All right, let's let the camera focus, and then let's take a look at it. The Wayfarer, very, very cool. Oh, the amount of uh, detail is pretty good. These are fairly thin. These are fairly thin. They're not thick. They feel good, though. They feel good, though. So here is this compared to uh, the Light Sears Tarot. Here's the Bosch Tarot compared to the Light Sears Tarot, and here it is compared to my deck, of 330 GSM cards. So there's a quick comparison for my deck and the Bosch Taro. Mine are 330 GSM. They're not exactly the thickest cards in the world, but they're pretty good. So there's you a comparison for thickness. And uh, let's see how far they... That moves all the way up to here. So that's pretty, that's pretty thin. There we go. All right, the Wayfarer, the Conjurer, the Magician. Very nice indeed. So he did get the original images and obviously tweak them a little bit. Mistress of Terror. So this is, um, according to the Kickstarter, Travis got the, uh, got some of the images and zoomed in. So this is a snippet of one of Bosch's paintings. Kind of interesting aspect in there. All right, the Virgin Mother. Kind of cool. And then the King. King of the East, I guess it's better than the King Kings of the East. It's better than the uh, the King of the North with Jon Snow, the Surgeon. That's sort of interesting. Has a funnel for a hat, and the Lover. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. We have Deception. Very interesting. <laughs> I keep saying interesting, but it is. It's sort of an unusual take on everything. Now, again, there is another Bosch Tarot that was released back in 2000 by LS, but uh, it looked drastically different than this, I have to say. Illumination. There you go. Man, the paintings, that had to take a long time to make. A lot of detail on those paintings. The Table of the Plenty. And the flower pusher. Here we have, as I did joke when we looked at the Kickstarter originally, there are a lot of things coming in and out of butts. So if you are a fan of inserting things into your bootay, this is going to be your dream tarot. Like legitimately your soulmate at this point. The barrel boy. Being sort of intimidated by a little dragon there. Death, as always, death is a bit of a ghoulish a bit of a ghoulish feel there. And then paradise. Paradise indeed. Temptation. How oh, interesting. I like the snake. 
has a head. The snake is trying to convince everybody of something. I have an idea. Please listen to me. The river to hell is usually paved with good intentions, I have to say. And the dreamer, yeah, definitely has a uh, definitely has some creepy aspects to some of these cards. The Grail Knight, very cool. I gotta say, these look great. I think Travis did a fantastic job on restoration here. The Christ Child, hmm. and Ancient of the Blessed have a bit of a world feel. That's kind of interesting. And then we have the actual world. There we go. All right. So that's a sort of a weird, where are they going in the judgment card? Is heading out somewhere else? Sort of an interesting portal idea. I've seen that replicated in other decks. Basically, where you have a portal to somewhere else. So these are not in order. We have a page and then a knight of berries. I'm assuming berries. We did get a book with it. So we will look here in the book in a minute. And holy crap, that small print. That's very, very small print. All right. Then a knight of berries and a baron of berries. Very interesting. Literally, berries sort of pour, pouring out there. And the princess of berries. So we'll figure out which of these map to which. We have a queen. Oh, that's right. In the Kickstarter, in the Kickstarter, the court is, um, is drastically different. I think it consists of most of the uh, most of the miners. You have the king, and then we have the ace. So not exactly a traditional, not exactly a traditional deck. Uh, let's dig in here a little bit. Yeah, it looks like a lot of things are courts or converted to courts. Not really sure what was the logic was behind that. Let's look at the book and find out though. The Page of Birds and the Nine of Birds have the sort of the same character in both of those. The Baron, hmm, sort of talking to different birds. That's an interesting, sort of the bird is feeding them rather than them feeding the bird. I like it. And the Queen, we have a made of a decapitated head. Are their genitals or another face? It could be it as well. Then we have the king. And finally the ace. That's a cool looking card. The restoration that Travis did on these, really cool. All right, now we have the page of books. Sort of a submerged into water. And then the nine of books. The Baron, huh, sort of being consoled by some creature, kind of a weird and interesting thing there. And the Prince, not sure what that is. Is that a sword coming out of his head? Sort of like a unicorn feel to that with a little bit of a platypus feel too. We have the Queen of Books, sort of balancing on her head. And then the King of Books. That would be easy to paint. Just 90% of your painting is just a cloak. Ooh, there we go. The ace. Interesting, interesting. I imagine that uh, Mr. Bosch was quite an interesting spectacle back in the uh, 1600s. Was it the 16th century? 1500s? I'm not sure. Page of coins. There we go. Things coming out of the booty. Things coming out of the booty. Because sometimes after Taco Bell, you may, you may have to do that. The Nine of Coins has something over their nose. Interesting. Bosch sure did a good job with people. Definitely took things to a little bit of a weirder state, but pretty cool. I'm not really sure what's happening. Is that a child, the prince? 
talking to a child. Not really sure what's going on with the undies there. The Queen of Coins. And the King of Coins. We have a gift. A gift in bed. It's like breakfast in bed, but it looks like money. Maybe it's a bag of gold. The Ace of Coins. It is coins after all. I have an interesting thing on a roof tile. And then we have the Six of Envy. Sort of a weird... No, glut, no, is that a, envy or gluttony? No, that is a sin of envy. There we go. A sin of envy. A sin of gluttony. Oh, there we go. The seven deadly sins. The sin of greed. Hmm. Sort of has a, a Last Supper feel, painting feel to it. We have somebody sort of getting someone else's attention. We have secrets being exchanged. And the sin of lust. Very, very cool. I remember some paintings that sort of have this feel there. Except obviously Bosch is going to take it to a really weird level. The sin of pride. And the sin of sloth. Very difficult to read. Okay, Travis, dude. Very difficult to read white text on white background, bro. I'm just saying. Travis, if you watch this, white text on white background, dude. Sin of... I have no idea. Wrath. Sin of wrath. There we go. Page of skates. Page of skates. The Knight of Skates has a harp feel like they're playing something or working on something. The Baron of Skates. We do have a lot of skates, I have to say. Has a little bow there, too. And the Prince of Skates. Queen. I'm not sure what's going on. I say 90% of these cards I have no idea what's going on. I'm interested to see how these read. Because we sort of re did redefine the miners. I'm interested as to how exactly this is going to read. Here we go. We have, the, we have a white text on a white background of skates. The king of skates. Here we go. The ace of skates. I mean, at least... You, you at least need to get the, uh, the, um, the stroke in Photoshop and increase the, increase the size or something. The ace. Here we go. The Page of Swords definitely has an oracle feel to it, doesn't it? The pretty colors, though. Really pretty colors. You know, painting on canvas. Ah, there's, there's really, there's, you can't touch that. I don't care how much, I don't care how much work you put into a paint filter and Photoshop. Paint on canvas really, really can't be touched. It just can't be touched, man. The Prince of Swords and the Queen of Swords. Sort of, oh, that's sort of weird. I'm not really sure. Like, I want to comment on some of these. Like, what intuitive things you can get. I mean, you definitely get a traitorous feel here, obviously, from the rat sort of slicing their throat and whatnot. And the king of swords looks like a bloody, a bloody sword doing something. This, a lot of these are sort of out of context because they're snippets of a bigger painting. So, uh, Within the painting itself, I think it would be more understandable, but, you know, just sort of put up with it. The Knight of Vessels and the Baron. Oh, so weird. The creatures are really weird in here. The creatures are no joke. No joke at all. No joke. All right, the Prince. And finally followed by... The queen, and we have uh, a couple more. The queen. I'm not sure what's going on with that. The dice on the head. And the king. Sort of refilling a pitcher, it feels like. And then the ace. So, a lot of stuff going on here. I mean, if you're doing a reading, I mean, bottom line, if you're doing a reading, and you're like, I need some stuff for my intuition to key off of, I think this is going to be I think this is going to be magic for you. So let's back out a little bit. Sorry for the shaky cam, because we want to get all of the extras that Travis included in here. 
because Travis did not skimp on the extras. Okay, first, obviously, extra is going to be the bag. This is a felt bag, guys. <gasps> this is a felt bag. It is nice and smooth. This is not like a cheap bag. This is a felt bag. It's got a, uh, it doesn't have a little um, tabs on the end or anything, but it's got a nice lining. I mean, Travis, Travis did a good job. So he had 1,500 backers. Did he, Travis, did you make 1,500 bags? Dude, I have no idea who you hired to do the bags, but Jesus, they, they, that's a good bag. I've had a lot of tarot bags in my time. I probably have uh, probably 50, and this is high quality, high quality. Here's the, uh, the tarot deck in the bag. So there you go, in case you're wondering like how it fits. There you go. Got a little extra roomy in there. You need to put the book. You can probably fit it in there. Here's the bag closed. And here's how it looks in the bag. Pretty impressed. This is just like one extra of like 100 in here. So let's take a look at the rest of them. All right, let's go, let's go ahead and put it back in the box. Yeah, obviously, the box fits in the bag as well. Box has a nice overlap to it. A nice overlap boxed. Very easy to open and close. I like the box. Very pretty box, too. Man, such a good job. Such a good job on this. And even the box fits within the bag, if you're into that. Some people may not like that. Some people may not. All right, let's go over the other 10,000 extras. Um, we'll do the book at the end. The text is microscopic. We're going to need to zoom in. That is, that is legit. I'm not even sure I can get. How close can I get? That is legitimately microscopic text. So um, we'll look at the little booklet at the very end. I actually need to go get some better glasses for that. So you also get a pen. Have a little pen. I mean, Travis didn't just... Okay, guys. Travis didn't just throw in a pen. Travis wrapped the pen in plastic. And here's what you get. A knife through hand. Very, very cool. It's a large pen. I mean, this is not a small pen. That's a large pen. That's very, that can't be cheap. It's very, very attractive. All right. And then we got something else. Again, wrapped in plastic. Travis could have just thrown this in by itself. But no, he wrapped it in plastic. Everything is wrapped in plastic. For 1,500 backers, I can't imagine... I can't imagine the amount of work. This is a COVID mask. <gasps> Travis, you gave me a COVID mask. Oh, Jesus, that looks good. Look at the, co you get a freaking COVID mask with this. Man. Okay, this is really cool. I'm pretty excited. I got to say, I'm, I'm, I'm excited all the time about everything, I'll admit, but I'm pretty excited about that. That is, that is an attractive COVID mask. Let's give it up. Give it up. Golf, that is an attractive COVID mask. Nobody else is going to be wearing that outside. I'm telling you now. Nobody else is going to be wearing one of these. That is very, very nice. Okay, what else did we get? So much stuff. We got another, we got a cloth. Okay, now you know, you know my rants about cloths. Again, wrapped in plastic. Wrapped in plastic. Travis went all out, man. 1,576 people got all of these extras. I mean, I didn't pay for any extras. These are all free with a Kickstarter. You know my, you know my uh, rants on cloths. You already know. Nobody makes a good cloth. They all look like crap. This one, though, <gasps> Travis, dude. Travis, dude. dude. Travis knows how to make a cloth. Look at this. Tra Travis, is not, Travis did not skimp on the cloth. Travis knows how to make one. The Chiro Marchetti is the only good cloth that I have until now. Um, because, yeah, look at this. Look at this. Look at how nice this is. Travis really went all out, man. So you get, you get the sections on the side. Got a nice center section. Here's the right section. Here is the entire center section. Guess I could zoom out a little bit. We still have more extras to go through. I know this video is going to take forever, but whatever. All right, let's zoom out a little bit more. Sorry for the shaky cam. And 
Let's see the cloth in a wider scale without it shaking. That'd be great. Okay, there we go. That is pretty. That is really pretty. And here is the bottom of it. So the cloth seems like to be about 12 by 12, 13 by 13. Pretty good size. Here is the left section, and here is the right section. All right, now we're done with the cloth. Let's zoom back in. I want to get pretty tight here and see a close-up of the cloth. So there we go. There is one section and another. So there we go. It is, it is, it is sort of sectionalized. Is that a thing? Is that a thing? And here is the bottom or top, depending upon how you laid it out section there along with the text and then here is that so here's the little middle portion which is upside down here is the middle portion where you'd be doing your readings so let's take a look at the corners here is the upper right and the upper left And lower left. Let's get it centered, be great. And lower right. There we go. Here are all the sections of the cloth. You're good now. You're good now. All right. And a super duper close up of the COVID mask. Now let's take a look at the other extras that we got. We got an envelope of something. Uh, it looks like a formal letter. Please find the reward. Take a corrective action. Most challenging decks. All right. Yeah, so Travis is from Vegas, apparently. So here's my letter. Please find the reward from your Kickstarter. It's one of the most challenging decks I've ever created. Uh, dude, even if this is the most challenging deck you've ever created, it took three years. It took three years. Wow. I'm telling you now. Uh, he's, he makes a new tarot deck in 2021. Travis, you have my business. You, I don't care what you make. You have my business. M my friend, Travis, you have my business. Whatever you make from now on. <laughs> anyway, um... <laughs> Because all the nobody else includes these this many extras. We have the ten of have the ten of pentacles. Not really sure how that fits in the whole maze of the deck. That's a different back too. Not really sure what's going on with this. Do I suppose, am I supposed to blend this in with the other deck? The back is different. I can't. Um, not really sure what's up with it. Um, you do get uh, where it appears to be a sticker and another sticker. And we got some bookmarks. Again, these were all free. These were all free inside of the Kickstarter. Here are your two bookmarks. All right, let's take a look at the book itself. Here's the book. Unfortunately, the text is quite microscopic. So if you're looking to read this, you're going to need 2020 vision and a microscope. So... It is very thorough, though. I have to say, it is thorough. I'm, I'm really thinking about just seeing if, if there's a PDF of this, because as is, not only is it difficult to read, but, uh, yeah, pretty difficult to read. I'll let you pause it. I'll put this up in 4K with the 4K flip-through. But for now... Uh, you get to read a few examples of the cards if you want to pause it. Well, basically, it's it's illegible unless you have a, a very powerful glasses. It's very, very small. Anyway, um, so here's a text size comparison to a regular book. I mean, you can sort of see you're looking at a, a fairly drastic, probably one half the font size of a regular book. So there you go. Uh, anyway, the book, the book that Travis included is thorough and has a ton of information on, on each card. You're looking at three paragraphs per card. So if you're looking for detailed explanations, you got it here. 
within the book. And fortunately, the, the font is almost unusable at one half the size of a, a standard font. So there you go. Anyway, um, overall, <laughs> overall, I got to say, I'm pretty pleased with this. Um, yeah, knocked it out of the park. This is one of the most thorough Kickstarters I think I've ever seen. And great communication. I got shipping info on it very quickly. And uh, Travis knocked it out. Anyway, please hit like and subscribe. Let me know what you think of the Bosch Tarot. Thank you for watching.